Hi, this is Cindy. And Michael. And today we're just going to run down the tools that you need to cull chickens. Uh, you need a clean source of water. Uh, we're doing home chicken butchering, so this is not on the level, quite on the level if you're going to be selling them. Uh, so we just use garden hoses. Uh, we didn't up and we rinse them out, we flush them out with a line. Uh, we don't want to have any problems with old water in them. I have a candy stove burner, which is used for a lot of things, but uh, you can make soup or all kinds okay. of stuff. I have a pot, a general pot that I use. Fill that with water, propane. Uh, thermometer, I'm running water up around. Greater than 165 degrees. Uh, one to scold the outside for make it a little safer and two to release the feathers. Uh, I may run up around 180 at first. So I have that. Uh, we got some buckets of water. Uh, we're going to use these for uh, both chilling the chicken after they've been blanched. Um, and then when we defeather them and rinse them, we'll do them in here. This is just cold water. We're in the fall, so it's not too hot out. It's, uh, if it's summer, we're going to buy quite a bit of ice. Uh, right now, we got one bag of ice for chilling our final product. Um, large bag, but we might get two, three, four bags if it was a hotter day because we'd have to start chilling some of these other items more. Uh, we got a, just a waste bucket for feathers and stuff. It's gonna, when we pluck them, uh, tools. You can improvise a little bit. Um, I have some restaurant style prep tables. Uh, these can be a little expensive, but you can find them online or get them at auctions a little cheaper. Uh, some hunting stores and things. Um, Watch out for the really cheap ones. They'll rust, even though they say they're stainless. Be careful. Uh, so spend a little bit of extra money. But it is nice. You could use another cleanable surface table um, for home butchery, but uh, given the option for stainless steel, it's better. Uh, hand tools. I have a paring knife that I can use for small work or for, um, uh, for jugging them. Um, I've got a little larger knife for portioning out. I could use a chef knife for utility. I just have a boning knife. Um, have some scissors if I need them. The other alternative is I can use a garden shear. Uh, that's mostly just used to cut the neck or cut the legs, the feet off. Uh, if I don't want to cut them through with a knife, I can use a chef knife for that. Um, I have a sharpening uh, honing steel. I have a thermometer for checking the water. I also have a basic, have a basic thermometer, um, a roasting thermometer, and a, uh, the pot that sticks on there. This is a rubber finger. Uh, this helps to pull the feathers. So I have a couple options. I could use a tumbler, which costs quite a bit of money with a whole bunch of fingers like this. And this is made for a drill or a post. Uh, we may start cleaning the chickens with these. It won't do a perfect job. And then we'll do the rest by hand, uh, but it's not essential. Uh, I have a garden tong that we try and just rinse off and keep clean. I use that when we're blanching the chickens and taking the feathers off just to dunk them in and out and have a way to get a hold of them. Pull them. Obviously, we've got a stick lighter. I like to keep some disposable paper towels. They're a little bit cleaner than um, rags. Um, we've got a finished cooler that's got some ice in it. I'm just going to put a little water in there to make a slurry so the finished product can chill down in there uh, before it goes to the freezer or the refrigerator. Um, we're running a little bit tight today because I have other projects going on and filling more of the barn space than usual. Uh, but I have a laundry tub sink, uh, which are also pretty inexpensive. It's just mounted on some wood. It's got a portable uh, water lines and waste lines, uh, making it really easy to move around so I can do this in different locations. Um, if I can drain it into a sewer or septic, that's great. If I'm in a real woodsy area, I can probably just drain small amounts into the woods. I keep a soap water container and I keep a uh, bleach water for sanitizing. So I have washing and sanitizing available. Uh, make sure we're really clean. So bleach, dish soap, scrubbing pad. Um, a lot of times I have a gut bucket. It's just another old bucket. Uh, that's gut bucket. I will likely bury the guts. We don't like to compost them um, because we're concerned about animals coming in and getting in our compost and it's near our chickens. So we usually just bury it and uh, let it uh, self-compost in the woods. Uh, I have another prep table here. I've got some cutting boards. Um, I like to have one or two so I can switch back and forth. I usually keep a container for the giblets that I want to keep, the neck, the heart, um, the liver, and the uh, gizzard. I'll put a little ice in here 
and so I can draw out the blood and just keep them chilled. I'll package those separate. Also the feet, probably put the feet in separate containers. I'll boil those out for a soup stock. Uh, so you can keep or leave whatever you want, but they're perishable and I like to chill them down separate. Uh, the last things that we do, um, typically I do a food saver uh, packaging. So we'll weigh everything. So we have some Sharpie markers and some pens. Um, so we can uh, record weights. Uh, we try and get an idea of roughly uh, what the weight is. A lot of times we just do it with the feet off. We just know what the frame is, so we got an idea. We know that our free range chickens and our breeds, we want to get 16 to 18, 20 weeks on them to get a large chicken, a four pound a, um, chicken once it's cleaned. Uh, some of them we take smaller than that. Um, and we don't have uh, meat breeds we have just our crosses between uh, basically dual purpose breeds so that's why we're not going to uh eight to ten weeks on these we're doing uh, 16 to 20 weeks so we like that uh it works well so we only keep the one our mixed breed um, the meat's really good it's still tender there's no issues for for any of the uses bones are a little more developed which is actually good because we get a better soup stock out of it um, and they're still easy enough to cut through and whatever else so uh, so that's kind of the setup in here uh, it's fairly portable. It's obviously it's a home setup, so I'm very comfortable that it's safe and sanitary for our use. I would not sell chickens this way. I would just upgrade things like the steel sinks. Um, I would have you know um, water lines that are um, potable water lines instead of garden hoses. Um, watch my temperatures with my ice. But basically, I'm doing everything uh, more or less the right way. I've just downgraded a little bit of my equipment um, for a, a sale situation. And um, yeah, and so we, we have an opportunity to do it in the outdoors if it's hot or in the shade. We can do it if it's cooler in here. We do it three seasons, so this is our fall calling. Uh, we could go a little bit later. We don't like to do it when it gets so cold that your fingers are cold or the water's freezing up. But it gives us flexibility through much of the year that we can do three or four small callings. We like to do uh, about 12 chickens plus or minus, so 8 to 15 or 16 is a good number. You can do that in three or four hours. Um, you know, half a day or a little more. Hardest part is setup. So all this equipment kind of sits for months. A lot of it I do wrap in plastic, but even then I got to clean it. I, we were a little hurried last time it didn't get wrapped up. So everything had to go through and get washed and sanitized and ready. So that takes a lot of setup, getting the water hot, cleaning it all down, sanitizing. I don't have any guts and stuff on it, packing it away. So that's why we like to do round 12. Uh, so it's not too big of a job, but if you're doing three or four you get a lot of setup and a lot of teardown. Waste half a day and you only get four birds out of it. Just supported on the side of the barn. We've got some chicken. Uh, um, just got some chicken cones. Got a small one and a medium one or a medium and a large. I can't remember. I think it's a. Uh, so we have those as options and that just helps us get um, get the bird calmed down and get the head position so it's easy to call. Um, you know, we just take care of them. They take about three minutes to calm down or less and, and then we go right into processing. So it's it's pretty quick. The hardest part is actually catching them. Uh, once we have a good hold on them, uh, it's the rest of it's pretty easy. So that's about it. Uh, you could work with gloves if you want to use latex or or a nitrile glove if that you know, if you prefer. There's no reason to. It's all going to be cooked food. Uh, I find it sometimes slippery to work with the gloves, so most of the time I prefer not to. Uh, obviously, if you have cuts on your fingers or other things, you're going to move to a glove for your own safety and for the, uh, you know, for food safety. But um, the chickens, yeah, they have contamination, they have concerns. That's why we cook them. But I'm not overly concerned uh, using uh, hand fabrication with these. And of course, I'm going to wash and sanitize my hands. In between all my steps, I regularly wash my hands up and sanitize them uh, before packaging, before food savoring them. Because once I have a finished bird, um, I do. I am concerned about my coolers that they are um, you know, that I'm not contaminating a lot of the outside of the coolers and then bringing that cross contamination into the house in our freezer. Uh, so we're we're aware of that uh, and, and don't have any problems. We get really good quality chickens.